What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today I'm going to be going over all the Pokemon that are going to be available in the Indigo Disc DLC of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> Today, November 21st, some previews went out for the Indigo Disc, which showed us a lot of the Pokemon that are going to be available. Between that and information found in the game, I was able to piece together exactly what Pokemon we are going to be seeing. And the final number at the end of the DLC is going to land between 739 unique Pokemon and 792 unique Pokemon, and I'm going to be going over the difference shortly. The only piece of information and discrepancy between these two different numbers comes to the non-registerable legendary and mythical Pokemon. Meaning, for example, Regirock, Ice, and Steel, if they are going to be able to be caught in the game, which at the current time we believe a majority of past legendary Pokemon are, in the same way in Dynamax Adventures and in Ultra Space Wormholes, we were able to get the previous legendary Pokemon. There's preliminary information leading us toward the belief that we are going to have a system similar to that in place. However, exactly what Pokemon there are, we do not know yet. That also goes for the mythical Pokemon, so unless every mythical Pokemon is in this game, which is highly unlikely, it's not going to be that full number, which is the reason I'm giving you this, this broad range of numbers it's going to be. We do know that every starter Pokemon is going to be catchable in the Blueberry Academy in the Indigo Disc. However, in order to have them appear in the wild, there is some sort of progression that you have to do in the DLC to make them available. And because you probably already played the base game, I'm gonna be removing Pokemon that are available in the base game. I'm gonna be removing Pokemon that are available in the base game and Kitakami. I'm gonna be removing Pokemon only available in Kitakami. I'm gonna be removing the unconfirmed legendary Pokemon. And I'm going to be removing the Pokemon that are only available via Pokemon Home. And just because we know that all the starters are going to be there, I'm also gonna be removing the starters as well. And thanks to the preview footage that has come out today, we do know a lot of the Pokemon that are going to be in the Indigo Disc DLC, as well as some information on what biomes they're going to be in. So all of that has been reflected in this video. And that leaves us with a very interesting list, and one of the most notable things is that there is a lot of regional Pokemon here, and that's because a fair amount of regional Pokemon are going to be catchable in the Indigo Disc, with an emphasis on the Alolan variants. Likewise, you're going to be able to find Alolan Geodude, Graveler, and Golem in the Indigo Disc, and regular Geodude, Graveler, Golem in Kitakami. So with that being said, let's focus on Pokemon that we're going to be seeing in the Indigo Disc, including the entire Oddish line, and of course there's going to be split evolutions between generations so when you see Oddish, Gloom, and Vileplume know that Blossom is also going to be there. And because about half of the Ketakami Pokedex is also Pokemon that were in the base game like the Venonat line, we're going to be removing that from emphasis in this video as well. With that we see that Tentacool and Tentacruel are going to be returning. Makes sense because you know we already had Toad's Cool. The Doduo line is going to be returning in the Savannah biome. We have the Seal line appearing in the Arctic biome. We have Execute and Alolan Executive who's going to be appearing at the beach biome in the Indigo Disc. Himonlee, Himonchan, which also includes Hitmontop and Tyrogue. We have Rhyhorn, Rhydon, and Rhyperior appearing in at least two of the biomes. We have the Horsey, Seedra, and Kingdra line. The Electabuzz and Magmar lines are going to be returning as well. We have Lapras appearing in the wild in the Arctic biome. Also, we have Porygon returning, which is pretty exciting. Chinchu and Lantern are going to be returning, as well as Snubble, Granbull, Skarmory, we see confirmed. Smeargle is going to be making a return after many generations of not being available. We're gonna have to wait to see how that does with the competitive scene. Plusle and Minum, which I don't know why they still exist. We have the Flygon line returning, finally. I mean, he didn't get a Mega Evolution, but he's finally back in the game, which is exciting. The Metagross line is returning. We do have some wild ancient Pokemon in the way that we had wild ancient Pokemon in the Sword and Shield Crown Tundra DLC, except now we're gonna be seeing the Cranidos line and Shield Online. A lot easier than trying to hunt them in the time-space distortions in PLA. We have Blitzel and Zeb Shrine who we have not seen on the Nintendo Switch at all until now, which is very exciting. They're going to be appearing in the Savannah biome. Drillbert, Excadrill, Whimsicott, and Cottony. Whimsicott being here is fantastic because Whimsicott is seen as one of the best Tailwind setters out of all of Pokemon, which is helpful because it sounds like the battles in the Blueberry Academy are going to be very difficult, all doubles battles. We have Scraggy returning as well as Mincino. The Solosis line is returning. We have Joltik. 
Like, there's only a few Pokemon that are only available in all three. One is the Electros line, which I don't know why it's gonna be available in all three Pokedexes. And the other one is the Oracorio line. I mean, that makes sense. There's a bunch of different Oracorio forms, and now we're gonna have the Psychic one being available in the wild in the Indigo Desk. We have Golurk being available. Strangely enough, there's only one evolution line that appears in both of the DLC Pokedexes, but not in the base game, which is the Mandibuzz line, which is pretty interesting. We have Esper and Meowstic returning, which is pretty neat. Malamar is going to be coming back. We have Two Cannon, which is pretty interesting. We haven't seen him since Pokemon... Has he been on the Nintendo Switch? We have a Raquinid coming back, as well as Comfy. Minior is going to be coming back, as we could assume, in all of its various meteor forms, which is going to be pretty interesting. Milseray and Al Creamy are going to be returning. It said that the treats for Al Creamy are just going to be spread on the ground as far as glistening spots in the same way you would find mints and terra shards and things like that, so that's pretty awesome. The only other Pokemon Sword and Shield Pokemon is going to be Duraludon, which makes sense because we have Duraludon's evolution, Archaladon, going to be in the game. And then also, Walking Wake and Iron Leaves, the two Pokemon that were only available via those limited Terra Raid events going on. Those are going to be able to be caught in the game. Supposedly, in Area Zero, after completing the events in the Blueberry Academy, which is then also going to be unlocking the uh, the other of the three beasts and the other of the three swords of justice, including Iron Hooves and Royal Beast. So funny enough, after eliminating every Pokemon that is not going to be in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and while looking at this list, there's only a few Pokemon that are just going to not be available on the Nintendo Switch at all after the end of this DLC, which includes Patrat and Watchhog, the six elemental monkeys from Generation 5, Sage, Seer, and Poor, and the Pokemon X and Y dog that you cut its hair, Furfuro. Which it's funny that Furfuro, its various forms are locked to different parts of the world in Pokemon Go, and Pan Sage, Seer, and Poor those three Pokemon are locked to different parts of the world as regional exclusives as well. In fact, if my entire living decks of Pokemon that I can be the original trainer of, I'm only missing Egyptian Furfuro, which I need to go book a flight to Cairo, Egypt to go change one of my Pokemon's forms and then finally be done with my entire living decks because he's not in this game. And because through Pokemon Bank to Home, you strip the form ID of Furfuro, so it doesn't help. The fact that we're at 792 out of 1,078 is most of the Pokemon in this game, which I think is pretty amazing. Anyways, guys, I wanna know what you think. Leave a comment down below if one of your favorites is returning in this game. And if you learned anything new, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out. Man, they see me shining like I got the charm. Stay strapped, got that jet ball in my palm. Felt from the sky, guess I'm the chosen one. And if you need to know how, check out Austin John. Champion flow, flow, yeah. I got that champion flow, flow.